In today's video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of what it's like to build a course environment online. So there's a couple of examples, what I've already done and what I'm planning on doing for Suburbia Press. So if that's interesting, hang on, I'll show you what I'm thinking about. Hi, my name is William Beam with Suburbia Press and our goal is to help online entrepreneurs like you build the technical platform that powers your business so you can serve your customers. One of the things that I do in my business is create courses that help people out. I've got some on different sites and I'm just starting to create some for Suburbia Press. So I wanted to show you what I've done in the past and then what I'm thinking about doing for Suburbia Press. Okay, this is the demo site for Buddy Boss. If you're not familiar with it, Buddy Boss is a theme that I use on some of my sites. It incorporates community and learning and a number of other things for online entrepreneurs. It's a very powerful theme. It's very easy to use, I think. There's a lot of flexibility. They're, they're always growing. It integrates with a lot of products, and that's why I selected it in the first place. Also, if you need to have a mobile app, they also provide a service, and it's an additional fee, but they provide a mobile app for you to use, and I'm hearing good reports of it. I'm not planning on going with a mobile app I am happy with Buddy Boss, but I'm thinking of switching up my theme for my blog to be something separate from my courses. And initially, I wanted it all together. I don't think there's a right or wrong. It really depends on what works best for you. So this is what Buddy Boss looks like when integrated with LearnDash. It's another product I'm very happy with. And you can see they come up with a very beautiful course display. So you can see all courses where you can click on just the ones that are related to uh, the user's account. You can sort through them alphabetically or whatever is newest. You can limit them by categories. And of course, there's just a very nice card display here that shows you what you have. You can also change this to a list display. So the user has quite a bit of control. And if you click inside, again, there's just a beautiful display with a banner ad. You can see course details if you want to know more. And then you've got this little thing over here that tells you how many people are enrolled, you're in progress, the student is in progress with this one, and they can continue, or they can register here if they're not already involved. It shows you how many lessons, how many topics, which are like different uh, videos or sections underneath a lesson, and there's a couple of quizzes and there's a certificate at the end. So you can see that you can write whatever you want over here, and it'll show what's been done, what's still left to go, tell you something about the instructor if you want to, and you can make this section as far as this, where this paragraph is, as little or as long as you want. And if we go ahead and click on continue, I want to show you inside the course. You can uh, see over here, there's a quick little list of what you have for your courses to go. And then you can see what the course looks like itself. I think this is a beautiful display. But there are times that I think that maybe I don't want to have my blog and my course system all together. There are things I can do for my blog using different themes like uh, the Cadence theme or the Astra theme that aren't quite as flexible inside of the Buddy Boss theme. I've gotten some help from the folks at Buddy Boss. The support's very good. And they've given me some CSS code to kind of stylize the blog the way I want. But there are other things that it does not do, uh, like hooks, for example, if you want to have certain sections brought into certain categories automatically every time. It doesn't do that right now. And... Also, there's the thing that if your site goes down, not only does your blog go down, but so does your uh, course and education system. I've only had one problem. It was quickly resolved. And that's not really what's triggering me to try to want to separate this. I think Buddy Boss is a great system. Learn Dash is a great implementation to it. I really love the presentation. But there's something else that I want to do. So this next tab is a software as a service called Searchy. I've done a review on this I'll, and I'll leave links to all these things below. Searchy is a video hosting tool that also allows people to search inside of the video and then automatically be taken to the moment in the video or to the video where their uh, keyword phrase was found. That is a really helpful thing. I can embed Searchy videos inside of my Learn Dash courses and the individual videos can use that search. But overall for the course, I don't really have a way to make that happen. And that's a feature that I want to be able to provide to my students. So what I've got over here with Searchy is not only a place to put my media and I can organize it in folders. I can build playlists. 
Widgets are things that you can put on your WordPress site or any other site with HTML in order to allow search. But this part here, hubs, this is where basically it's a kind of a page builder. And you can see I'm in the page builder here. I can select which page I want to work on and just kind of add all of these little things together. And then I can build like my header, which is this section up here. I can add different sections like this over here. And I've got a, a um, onboarding section right here, which says welcome aboard. When someone first comes to the site, there's a welcome video and a site tour. After they've completed that, I can have tags that will change the view so they only see their courses. So right now I only have one course, and this one is for people who use Wishlist member. And if we go ahead and enter that course, you can see the videos are right here. And here's the search. So if I want to search for integration, for example, and it'll come up and tell me a few things. Here are the media files that have that listed in the title. There are chapters within each of those video files. So it'll tell you which chapter it is. It can take you directly there. And then the keywords were found 29 times in five different media files. So if I go ahead and click on this, you can see the time over here. It shows you how long uh, the videos are. But over here, you can see where it says from 423. Let me just go ahead and click on one of these. Let me stop that from playing. You can see over here, there's a transcript and you can see where integration was found. And if I go ahead and select one of those, and as I click on these, you can see with a little timestamp down here that it's jumping to different times where I've mentioned that uh, keyword that I'm searching for. That is very helpful, not only for someone who is looking forward to finding something that they maybe have seen before, or if there's a feature, let's say in wishlist member, they said, I just need to find out something about this. I don't want to watch through all the lessons one by one. I want to go search for this feature. They can put it in the search, find it and jump right to that section. So that is, in my opinion, very powerful. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to use searchy hubs to provide my courses. Of course, the display is not quite as beautiful, I think, as what we saw over on the, the demo side over here, if we look at uh, LearnDash, adding another feature that I'm not getting inside of LearnDash is something that I'm looking for here. So if I come over here and enter the course, you can see there's a little uh, wheel up here that's showing you what your percentage complete is, and the courses are right here. And honestly, I think the display works well enough. You can have multiple little media lists like this. For this course, I really only needed one playlist, but I could have multiple playlists down here. And also something else I couldn't do is have your recently watched video that's right here. And, you know, I've got a little section to uh, get support and I'll fill out my footer as I go along. But I think the overall value that I'm going to get from Searchy Hubs exceeds what I'm getting with Buddy Boss and LearnDash. But there are some compromises. And that comes in the form of integration. Searchy only integrates right now there's a native integration with Stripe and everything else goes through Zapier. So if we take a look in Zapier, there are a few things to keep in mind. One, quite simply, this is middleware. It has to go from one site to another site to accomplish something and it doesn't do it immediately depending upon the plan that you pay for. I've just recently signed up. I'm on a free plan right now, but I'll end up having to go to a different plan. If we look at the pricing, you can see there there is a free plan, 100 tasks per month. And then the next level up is about $20 a month. And you can see that it allows you to have 20 zaps and there's a 15-minute update time. What that tells me is that when somebody comes and registers for one of my courses, there's a 15-minute delay before they can get access. That's really not what most people expect. They're expecting to get something pretty much immediately that tells them, here's where you sign in, here's how you have access to your course. So if I can get up to a two-minute update time, that's probably more acceptable. That's 50 bucks a month. And that gives you 2,000 tasks per month. You can buy more tasks per month. And keep in mind, a task is every little thing that it does. So if it integrates and sends a task to search for adding a tag, that's a task. If I want to add two tags, those are two tasks. So it really adds up with everything you want to do. And I thought, I want to use Zapier as little as I possibly can to avoid having to spend a lot of money on something that I wish 
uh, Searchy integrated directly. What I found out is that, one, I don't want to use Stripe integration directly with Searchy. It works, it's functional, and I think a lot of people like it, but it doesn't give you the opportunity to have upsell or downsell. I have a cart service called ThriveCart, and I've got a little test product over here, so I can create a funnel, and if I want to enable the funnel, I can say, what do I want to do? So my integrate with the uh, wish list, or I could integrate with uh, Zapier if I wanted to do this. De depends on what you want to do. Do you want to just display their invoice, provide a URL to the purchase, add to a membership site is what I have selected here. And then you can do your upsells and downsells. So if you have different products, you can add them over here. And within the product itself, you can add a bump order. So for example, like you got this, hey, would you like for a few dollars more to get some templates to go along with whatever it is or whatever kind of upsell or bump order that you can provide. It's just a way to make a little bit more money. Stripe doesn't give you that. Thrivecart uses Stripe. It also uses PayPal. So that gives me a few different payment options for my customers if they prefer to use PayPal rather than their credit card. So to me, Thrivecart is the tool that I want to use. It will also integrate with Zapier. But again, then I start using up my tasks. What I decided I wanted to do instead is actually use Wishlist Member because Thrivecart integrates with Wishlist Member, as we just saw. So when somebody purchased something, I can add them to a membership. That in turn integrates with my CRM, which is Fluent CRM. Fluent CRM at the time I'm recording this is in October 2021. It's just turning one year old. It is great. It has 10,000 sites already using this product. And you can see that they're having their first anniversary sale at the time is 40% off. It's really a wonderful product. The thing is, it doesn't necessarily have all of the integrations that some other more mature products have. If you were going with ConvertKit or with ActiveCampaign, those will integrate directly with Thrivecart. This one doesn't. There's like a webhook, but that only goes one way and only does so many things. So it's not really the best integration. But if I send something from Thrivecart to Wishlist Member, well, Wishlist Member integrates directly with Fluent CRM. So now I have a path where something is going from my point of purchase with Thrivecart to my website with Wishlist Member. Wishlist Member in turn will update my CRM or my email system if, if you want. And then I've got these people on a list. I can add tags to them and I can start sending them messages depending upon what they've just purchased. Wishlist Member will not talk to Searchy, but it will talk to Zapier. So I can come back over here and let's say that we want to create a Zap. So you can see we've got Searchy right here. And let's say we start with Wishlist Member because that's the point where I want something to happen. So when a member is added, that's what starts the Zap. So now I can go on and I can add more things if I need to, or I can come down here to an action and select Searchy and say, do I want to add or update an audience? An audience is basically who has access to a membership, a, a hub. And then I can also add an audience tag. So I'm going to have a couple of tasks within this, but that completes my path. So now I have a place of purchase on Thrivecart. Thrivecart will update wishlist member. Wishlist member will update Fluent CRM directly on my site. And then through Zapier, it will update the person on Searchy. So that way they have everything they want. I have them in my CRM. Everything's good. The last part that I need to do is come over here. I use uh, legal templates from Bobby Clink. So for example, at the bottom of my page, I didn't have anything yet, but I'll need to put in my privacy policy, my terms of use, my website disclaimer. And also since I'm running a course, let's see, come down here to clients and programs, you'll see there is a course agreement terms and condition. So that is specific to each course that I put up there. That way I have my legal protection. Everybody knows what they're getting into because I'll have them check the box to make sure they've declared that they've read it before they've made their purchase. And you could do the same thing with a membership agreement or a coaching agreement. So there's a, I've got the whole package. He doesn't uh, necessarily require you to buy every legal template at once, but for me, it was a good value to do so. But you can get the privacy policy for free. 
And for each one, you've got a place where you can download your template, and he gives you a video walkthrough. These little sections in yellow highlight are options you have, and you can choose which option works best for you. He'll explain all of that in the video. And he's also working on a generator, basically something where you type in the details of your business, and it will generate the document for you in the right place. That's not on all of the legal templates as of yet, but that's something that he's working on and is built out in a few of his uh, templates, I think, on, on the website legal. So with that in mind, to build out my hub, I've got that with Searchy Hubs. I have Wishlist Member on my website, which now lets me change from the Buddy Boss theme to Cadence or Astra or anything else that I want to for the presentation of my blog. I have Wishlist Member to give me a local copy, if you will, of everybody who signs up for those courses. That integrates with Fluent CRM so I can email them and stay in contact. And of course, as I said, Thrivecard is where I can do my point of purchase, have my upsells and downsells. And then I've got my legal protection from the templates with Bobby Clink. I hope that little insight gives you some ideas of what you can do. There is nothing wrong with Buddy Boss. I like Buddy Boss. I'm using this on a couple of sites. And I, th I think it's just a difference of how you want to approach your own integration and your own, uh, what, what you want to do. So if you're not using Searchy, I probably wouldn't go through all of this, obviously because the hubs wouldn't be there if I'm not using Searchy. But because I am using this for more than just the hubs and more than the courses, I'm also using it for a podcast. It does great transcription and it, it's really a wonderful tool. But I've decided that I want to use more of the features that it offers. And that means setting up something besides LearnDash and BuddyBoss. I still highly recommend Buddy Boss. I highly recommend Learn Dash. And with this setup, I don't have to pay Zapier a penny. I don't need it. But that's the trade-off of going to hubs is that I have to integrate through Zapier. If you have any questions about this setup, please let me know in the comments. Which way would you prefer? Would you want to keep it all on your own website? Or would you like to break things up, have your blog in one place, maybe your courses or membership in another place? I did previously use Teachable. I wasn't really a fan of Teachable. I found it very limiting. I think you can do a lot more with either Buddy Boss and Learn Dash or with Searchy Hubs. So I would recommend going with either one of those approaches, depending upon what your needs are. If you do go with Buddy Boss, you're going to need better hosting than what you'll find with most uh, WordPress managed hosting because they don't give you enough CPU and resources. You'd probably want something like a VPS. I use Cloudways to support my size, and I don't pay anything more on the VPS. I get a lot more power and I can choose the location of my site, but I don't pay anything more than what I would on, let's say, WPX hosting, which I used to use. And it's half the price for a lot more power than what WP Engine charged me. So a VPS doesn't have to be as expensive as you might think, and you get a lot more power and resources. So with that in mind, I hope this was helpful for you. Please, if you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe, click that little like button that tells YouTube that we did something right and they'll share this with more people and maybe that'll help them out. And click the little bell notification icon if you'd like to see more videos. Thank you so much. I'll see you again in the next video.